Um, okay, so this is the long gallery and the, the stage that we got to um, prior was a little bit more basic. So here we looked at adding uh, a bit more kind of uh, detail um, into the scene. Uh, so we've got some kind of panelling uh, around the windows, an extra detail um, on some of the some of the features there. So we, we modelled those up and that's a combination of uh, it being in, in 3D uh, and even kind of going into, into 2D um, and getting the extrusions for the cornicing, um, etc. So we finished off all the detail modelling um, for that with just a, a plain material here and then we kind of moved it into texturing and lighting of, of the scene to get that kind of authentic feel uh, and again that shuttling between uh, the 3D uh, project so here we can kind of see we, we go from clay view here without the materials uh, to a shaded view um, and it's a combination of working then between 3D and then going into Photoshop where we, we take the 3D geometry um, here squashed out flat um, and then that allows us to kind of paint in basic features. So here we've got um, some detail uh, of the ceiling where we can paint in plaster cracks, uh, water stains and even floorboards and wattle and daub from supposed rooms below or above uh, and we can kind of paint in and, and make the scene look a lot more kind of lived in um, as it had to be for the for the story and the script it being left alone for 40 years um, and it was very kind of water damaged so flipping between Photoshop and then our, our 3D program uh, we kind of map those textures into the environment um, and then we, we can do some quick uh, kind of render tests just to check on how all the various textures are, are starting to look. So here we've got some of the gold gilting leather panels. We just had to kind of take the existing designs and, and tweak them to get a repeat pattern that looks natural. And then we can kind of, we started here very subtly playing with different lighting. The scene was set at night. So it's got to be fairly dim, but we want an element of enough light in there to see the kind of decay and, and detail uh, that, that make the room look uh, more interesting. So again, lots of kind of light, different lighting setups um, and, and tests here just to make sure that everything kind of looked fine for when we, we take it into the games engine um, and uh, put it out for real. So that was it on the on the 3D front here. With these are some of the kind of uh, lights that we add. So we have some kind of general ambience lights, and then some specific moonlit moonlight nighttime lights coming in uh, through the window to kind of mimic uh, the outside world. Okay, and then this is uh, Unity, where we can uh, import the geometry from the 3D program. Uh, and it gives us then a, a rip, the uh, option to have a kind of real-time uh, approach that eventually will be in the augmented reality app. So here you can see the, the geometry. Um, we've even kind of put in a, a little bit of environment and, and background should you uh, care to glance out of a window. Uh, and it gives us a, a split view then between our kind of working mode and setting up the project and then what the actual uh, end user will kind of see and view when they, um, when they run the app. Uh, and this then allows um, the, the programmer uh, to kind of tweak any issues and interactivity um, that they might need. So here we were even adding kind of little dust particles um, just to kind of add to the whole ambience of the scene so we would then once we finished with that pass it over to the programmer who then kind of uh, sorted out any interaction uh, imported any audio files that needed to be triggered uh, when the viewer kind of takes a, a look around the scene and there we have our kind of long gallery in, uh, in 
its all its glory. So we can even kind of have a little look out the window. Okay, this w was um, for pod one, uh, the lace um, aspects where essentially we've got um, our actor and the hand, uh, disembodied hand that comes into a scene uh, and part of the story is told from his perspective and his mother's perspective. Um, and these, it then kind of le links onto uh, the augmented reality scene that um, fills the uh, exhibition space. So one of the, one of the issues um, that we had was linking the two parts of the project together. Um, so not only did we have to kind of set this um, in a real world space, so matching the kind of scale, um, but it then had to link um, into the actual gallery space. So we had to kind of liaise um, with uh, the people designing the gallery space to, to find out exactly where each of the um, exhibitions was going to be situated to kind of get a north, east, south, west. Uh, so here we're looking at uh, the gallery space and we had to kind of liaise um, with the guys who were, who were designing um, the, the exhibition space so that the lace scarf actually sat in situ um, on the table and various other markers um, were all kind of correlated to the animation that we were setting up. So it's it a matter of liaising between um, a scale plan view um, and then the actual animation uh, of the table that it, it sat at the right height off the floor, uh, the hand came in the scale of the um, candles and the, and the flickering light were all kind of correct um, and that everything was kind of placed in, the, in the, uh, the correct position. So some of it we had to um, test and experiment with blocking objects um, for when the hand first uh, came in. So this block, blocking object was mimicking the actual glass case that was going to be in the exhibition space. Um, and uh, so we kind of, it was put in there, we can kind of see initially just to block the initial position uh, of the hand before it then entered the glass case um, to try and get it to correlate with the real world space. So that, that was a bit of a kind of spatial uh, issue there that we had 